in this video what we're going to do is talk about the liberal state so in the last video we looked at the kind of principles that um, are upheld under a system of liberalism the idea of individualism and capitalism and, and the kind of economic and social policies um, that uh, are um, quite um, you know correlate with the idea of liberalism well in this lesson we're going to look more technically at the the idea of statehood and the idea of government within the liberal um, framework so we're going to introduce the concepts of the liberal state in this video so we're going to talk about the kind of origins the kind of rationale for liberalism and then we'll talk about some of the key principles uh, that a liberal state upholds to and uh, these principles are going to be um, the majority of this lesson so as an introduction, in the last lesson, we looked, like I said, at the concepts of individualism and the concepts of capitalism. Liberal are, liberals are very much, um, you know, very pro-capital, um, free markets uh, and very pro-individual, um, you know, personhood, individualism. And this is central to the liberal thesis. However, these concepts are not necessarily unique to the liberal project. They could also be applied to other political philosophies, things like anarchism. Anarchism is very um, heavily weighted on the concept of individual rights and individual responsibilities. So what makes liberalism more unique is the nature at which these principles of individualism apply to the state when it comes to liberalism, apply to the liberal state. And we're going to look at these um, in this video. So when we're talking about the state, unlike theories of anarchism, the liberal um, thinkers believe that the existence of the state may be necessary for bolstering the concepts of capitalism and individualism. So these are the two concepts, uh, two of the concepts that you know are very heavily centered in in liberalism. And so anarchism and anarchists accept the you know some forms of anarchism will accept the necessity of of individualism and capitalism. However, they might reject the concept of the state, whereas when we're talking about liberalism, they believe that the state may be necessary to uphold these principles. And really to understand this, we must look deeper at the underpinnings of liberalism. So, as we already know, liberalism takes what we would describe as a generally optimistic approach to human nature. If we're In the first lesson, we talked about the concept of the state of nature, the state before um, before the uh, modern states um, developed the state without a government and um, you know in uh, for people like Thomas Hobbes the state of nature was something that was nasty brutish and short but for people like John Locke they believed that it was not necessarily a negative thing because of the freedom of of, an, of the individual self that would be um, allowed for within the state of nature However, Locke still did believe that despite the fact that the state of nature wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing, okay, the structures of the state were necessary to ensure the individualist ideals. Now, this sounds relatively counterintuitive. How can we be the maximum liberal, um, the maximum individualist kind of people that we want to be under a liberal regime, but still um, devolve some of our some of our freedoms to the state to a state in general well this may be because we want to ensure what would be described as an equitable resolution of disputes between individuals in the state of nature if there was a dispute to take place related to for example property ownership there would be no mechanism in place because there would be no state there'd be no mechanism in place to be able to equitably um, resolve these disputes, to fairly and justly resolve disputes of these nature. So for Locke, the state ought to provide some kind of structural basis to ensure that these rights are maintained and that they are maintained for everyone, not just, say, the few. So despite suggesting that the state of nature is not necessarily a bad thing, okay, unlike Hobbes, I said it says they're like Hobbes, but unlike Hobbes, Okay, the ideals of liberalism would be best suited with the existence of a state to regulate these ideals and to uphold them and to ensure that they are um, equally distributed across everybody. So with that being said, let's look more specifically at the principles of the liberal state, some of the uh, political principles that are upheld within liberalism. So there are a number of principles that liberals argue are necessary for a state. 
So not only um, do liberals accept that the state of nature might be, you know, might be generally a not a not necessarily a bad thing. OK, they also believe that if the state is going to exist, it has to exist under a certain number of conditions. And these conditions are it has to reject the traditional state. We'll talk about that in the next slide. It has to be government by consent. It has to promote natural rights. It has to promote tolerance. It has to be a meritocracy. It has to promote equality of opportunity and it has to promote justice. And what we're going to do for the rest of this lesson is uh, unpack each of these um, different principles. So what do we mean when we talk about the rejection of the traditional state? Well, the concept of the liberal state is really an inherent rejection of this kind of pre-enlightenment style of government. The pre-enlightenment style being things like the existence of a monarchy that has absolute and arbitrary power uh, um, and arbitrary rule. And this is the idea of the traditional state that Locke was talking about. As we shall see when we look at government by consent, the idea of this power to the people is very important for liberalism. So as such, any kind of state that uh, that is reminiscent of this traditional understanding where we have power that is centralized uh, in a monarchical system um, that ought to be rejected under the liberal state because the second point is the idea of government by consent as mentioned in the previous slide uh, the concept of government by consent implies that the state ought to be uh, the quote servant of the people and so this is really a direct rejection of the traditional monarchical understanding of the divine right of kings. So instead of there being a divine right of kings to rule, the power to rule comes from God, instead the power of rule, the power of um, you know having power over other people in government, that comes from the people. It comes by consent from the people. And so this really, you can describe this as more, instead of a, a top-down approach where the power comes from above, i.e. comes from God, this is a bottom-up approach. The power of the government officials to, to govern uh, in a state comes from the consent of the people. And as we saw in the previous lesson, uh, government by consent is directly linked to the idea of government by contract. So individuals who consent to the existence of the state form a contractual relationship with it. The idea of a social contract, this is something that was developed by Rousseau, the uh, French philosopher. And basically, they agree to laws and rules which bind them to the state, under the state, so that if we live in a state and consent to living in a state, we must follow the rules and the laws that the state prescribe. For example, you know, do not murder and do not commit theft, all these kind of things. And in return, you are granted positives such as protection, organisation, allocation of resources, for example, etc., etc. So we have this, what, what would be described... Um, if we were to be studying contracts, this is something called consideration. So you get something for something else. So an agreement takes place between the people and the state and you get something in return for giving up something. And that is the, the idea of a social contract. The third point is the promotion of natural rights and liberal uh, individualism. Sorry, And prior to the kind of existence of a state liberals believe that the concept of individualism is paramount so the whole point of developing a state the whole point of establishing a state according to the liberal is just to bolster and to promote the concept of individualism it's nothing more if a state cannot achieve that end then it's not a state really worthy of um, of, of existing according to a liberal this means that uh, a liberal state must ensure the promotion of the natural rights and individualism which are at the core of the liberal project. The only reason why the state should remove any natural rights of an individual and that is to ensure the protection and promotion of the individualism of others. So for example, um, you could argue that if somebody commits a crime and is sent to prison that this is a restriction of their individualism, of their individual, their natural rights and their freedoms. But that's only justified if they have done something or if they have potential to do something that um, that is a, of detriment to the individualism of others. 
and that is why that is the justification for removing these natural rights on some individuals. The fourth point is the promotion of tolerance. So on top of the protection of one's rights to individualism, the liberal state also um, has to exist to ensure that tolerance towards everybody else for people who want to express their individualism and their natural rights in different ways. John Stuart Mill made the argument that the state should promote any kind of actions and opinions just so long as they do not harm others. Now that's very um, important because this is what we call the harm principle and it exists quite a lot across philosophy, specifically political philosophy and legal philosophy. So uh, a good example of where I was first taught about the harm principle uh, was in the philosophy of criminal law. Uh, an idea that, um, you know, the crimes what makes a crime a crime is that it produces harm to people an action is a crime if and only if it, it creates harm that's the idea of the harm principle and this is the harm principle applied to uh, in the realm of political philosophy and uh, mill said that you can you can be pol uh, tolerant of anybody as long as that tolerance does not extend to being tolerant of people uh, and to actions that harm other people now, yeah, so the central thesis is um, one ought not commit an act or a mission uh, which causes a person or person's um, particular harm. Now, the concept of tolerance is a very interesting one within the, within the political philosophy so, uh, and within political ideas as in general. It has a number of issues. Karl Popper, who was a philosopher, argues that uh, the subject of tolerance fundamentally presents us with a paradox. The idea of universal tolerance presents us with a paradox. And the paradox of tolerance asserts that in order to ensure that a tolerant society exists, a, you know, a society that is tolerant, one must be intolerant of those who are intolerant of others. That makes that sounds a little bit like a tongue twister, but what I mean by this is if we take this example here. So how long would a democratic society exist, okay, if it were to be stringently tolerant of ideas of an of an anti-democratic party for example so if we were living in a democratic society and we wanted to uphold the principles of democracy should we allow an anti-democratic party to get into power and generally speaking if we are tolerant of those um, ideas then our democratic society wouldn't uh, won't last much longer Sooner or later, uh, an anti-democratic party may yield enough power to bring democracy to an end, which is a very interesting point. There's a lot of philosophy on the paradox of tolerance, and it is actually something that um, has quite a lot of contemporary discussion as well. So Popper effectively argues that in order to maintain a tolerant society, one must be intolerant to those who seek to bring harm to the societal structure, which links a little bit back to the harm principle that Mill suggested. So this idea of tolerance within a liberal society doesn't necessarily mean universal tolerance. It doesn't necessarily mean we are tolerant to people universally. They can, it, can, um, it allows for the existence of intolerance to people who seek to bring harm. Um, and of course, this is a controversial argument, which always has endless practical issues and endless uh, when we're talking about applying the paradox of tolerance and applying intolerance to certain groups of people. The next point is meritocracy. So the exercise of power must be given to those who prove themselves as being able to yield such power. So this effectively implies the liberal state should reward on merit and no other consideration whatsoever. So people should only be allowed um, to yield, you know, the power uh, that is granted from the state if they have proven that they can do so. Okay. Uh, Thomas Paine uh, noted that beyond equity, beyond reason, and most certainly beyond wisdom which impri it basically implies that the concept of an aristocracy has no place in the liberal state. So people should be allowed to, um, people should only be allowed uh, to, to yield power if they um, are worthy effectively of doing so. They have proved themselves capable uh, of leading. This links slightly into the idea of equality of opportunity because equality of opportunity um, effectively means um, that we have a, a strict um, commitment 
to being um, equal in our opportunities. I know that sounds like I'm just uh, reiterating what I said, but this means that we have equal natural rights and equal rights under the law. And this is the concept of foundational equality. And there is the existence, um, the liberal state does allow for the existence of some people doing better than others in life. And this isn't necessarily an issue. Okay, you can have people who will um, strive to the top and, and, and reach the top so long as everybody starts from a single place. Everybody starts from at the starting line and some people will do better than others because some people may be more driven or maybe more motivated or maybe feel like they need to do better uh, and some people might not do as well in life, generally speaking. And the point is... Um, that this isn't a problem this kind of uh, divide in the different structural um, relationships between people uh, and different maybe even like wealth gaps and stuff that's not necessarily a bad thing so long as everybody starts from the same place at the beginning and this is the equality of opportunity everybody has the opportunity to strive towards the best however not everybody will reach that okay so people some will choose to strive for greater things others may not but everyone should have the equal opportunity to develop their own potential. And this is something that contrasts with the idea of the equality of outcome. So the equality of outcome states that in the end state, at the end of, uh, at the end of a particular period of time, everybody has to be equal uh, no matter what. And this is not necessarily something that most people agree with. People agree that people should be allowed to have the opportunity to do whatever they want, but people shouldn't be allowed to have to um, have to. Uh, the, the state shouldn't enforce equality in the end, um, regardless of what happens. Okay, so regardless of uh, of of if some people do better than others, the idea of everybody having the same outcome isn't something that is necessarily accepted. The idea of equality of opportunity, though, is a lot less controversial. And then the final point is justice. So the state ought to embody this idea of justice. Now, this generally means that individuals should be treated fairly and justly without any kind of discrimination. Discrimination based on race, sex, uh, sexual orientation, gender, all of these different things. And this is linked to the idea of equality as, you know, and is something that we'll um, look at in a lot more detail when we talk about Rawls' theory of justice, a, a modern liberal, the sort of model, modern liberal um, regime. So in summary, then, we've really just what we've done in this video is uh, explain what the liberal state is. OK, we've looked at the existence of the state for liberals and we have uh, argued that it may be necessary to allow for equitable resolutions of disputes. Uh, we looked at the number of principles that ought to be upheld in a liberal state. These were the rejection of the traditional state, the idea of this um, traditional monarchical divine right of kings. We've looked at the idea of government by consent. Again, not government by um, the power from God, the, the ruler's um, right to rule, but the rulers um, should be able to rule by consent of the people. The promotion of individualism, the promotion of tolerance, the idea of a meritocracy, the idea of everybody being um, having equal opportunities to do what they wish. And then the final concept of justice. 